103.7 FM, the Monster Street Sounds, 1038 Eastern Standard Time. Shout out to those of y'all on the West Coast. As promised, we're giving you a little preview to the Street Sounds After Hours with Nick Fury tonight. He's a huge Rascass fan, as many of us are. And uh, we got Rascass on the phone lines, as promised. And uh, we're about to talk to him and see what is really good. So, Rascass, all the way from Cali, I'd like to welcome you to Ganawage, Quebec, Montreal. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Well, definitely, it's great to have you on the show tonight. Now, we're giving the people a little preview just so everybody could get this interview. Uh, we're doing it a little earlier before the After Hours show start. And the host of that show, Nick Fury, who you've uh, communicated with, is a huge, huge, huge diehard fan of your music. And uh, he wants to chop it up with you and uh, find out what's really good, what you've been up to as of late. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm here. I'm here to answer all questions. Nice, Razzy. What up? First, I got to uh, welcome you home. Welcome you home from, uh, you know, I'm back in the rap game. There was uh, a quote uh, that Nas said regarding Drake a little while ago. You're like, uh, that Drake is fresh water on dry land. And I got to say, I got to use that quote for you being home right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you've been, uh, since right when you came back, you've been dropping, uh, we're going to get into the uh, Mondays. You've been dropping the quarterlies. Every Monday, you've been dropping a brand new track. And uh, first, I'd like to talk about the Michael Jackson tribute. Not only did you drop a uh, Michael Jackson tribute, but you also dropped uh, a drop-in for uh, Jack and for Beats tribute. I was wondering if you could tell the people the inspiration behind that. Um, well, you know, unfortunately, you know, Michael had passed, and, and, and I just kind of, you know, I was like, one person's leaving, and I'm coming home, and it was just like, well... You know, I hadn't done a record yet, you know what I'm saying? I hadn't put out a record that was me. I had done some, like, some features, you know, for friends, you know, whatever, Dino Bless and whoever, and, you know, Black Milk or whatever. But I hadn't done anything that was a Raz Jazz record. So I was like, you know, I was still kind of unsure what kind of record to come out with, and I just felt like that was fitting and appropriate to, to do, you know, show some respect to somebody as opposed to come out with a me, me, me record. So, then, I mean, unfortunately, Michael passed, and I figured it'd be, a you know, a kind of a... a Showing my respect, you know what I'm saying, and also, you know, to get my feet wet, just to just touch the people and say, hey, I'm back, and this is kind of how I feel, you know what I'm saying, without it being a whole big arrogant record or something like that, you know what I'm saying, so it worked out really well, and then just, you know, the whole Jack and Fabrice, I was like, uh, you know, if I do something, I want to climb over his records, and then my a friend of mine um, had the idea to say, you know, to go back and forth between other people who, you know, who use Michael Jackson records, like, you know, H to the Izzo, whatever, you know what I'm saying, Nas, it ain't hard to tell. So going back and forth between the originals and the songs that we use as hip-hoppers to, to you know, and sample them. So it, it worked out really dope, you know what I'm saying? This, the Mike and his name is Michael Jackson, so it's Mike Jack, you know, it just worked yeah, out Mike on a whole lot of levels. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said, it's about respect, and I mean, you feel the love in the song. And actually, talking about respect, you dropped uh, another track on your quarterlies called "Thank You," and uh, used the Golden Girls sample. I gotta ask you where the uh, where the idea to uh, use the Golden Girls came from, too. Well, I just you know, my grandma passed away fairly uh, not not recently, but kind of you know for me, whatever she, she passed away two years ago, and. Uh, I used to be little and I'd have to watch that show at her house, you know what I'm saying, like when I was little. So it was always stuck in my head, that theme. <laughs> and it was kind of cathartic for me. I just wanted, I had, you know, about, probably about seven months ago, I just was like, yo, man, I just, you know, I would like to thank people, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot, a lot of times in rap is so one-sided nowadays, you know, like people can't say thank you, people can't say I love my mother, you know, it's, it's, it's always... I, I'm getting this money and I'm hustling and you know and that's a reality of life but sometimes just being appreciative is a rea reality of life too so that I, I've been trying to do songs that mean something to me uh, you know and uh, that's another song that just meant something to me oh yeah and that's another song that you feel it in too and uh, like actually Dead Prez uh, said on their last album you know when you put your hand out is it to give or to receive so it was kind of cool that you did a whole track just uh, you know big enough people that have helped you out throughout your whole career right and uh, also another hot track that you dropped is the Millie Vanilli with Killer Priest. And I gotta ask you, is there a, is there a chance of a Four Horsemen reunion? Always, you know what I'm saying. We're all friends and family, you know what I'm saying. So Priest had a show last night, you know, and so I, I was there. He called me and we rocked out. We didn't get to do Millie Vanilli. I didn't have it with me, but 
I'm definitely gonna keep that on deck nowadays. Um, and yeah, we're gonna do horse and stuff. Corruption on uh, the quarterly is a song a week for ten weeks. This is this being the tenth week, and uh, the record we dropped today is the reconciliation. And then um, what we what we do is we're gonna fall back for two weeks, and then there's a link so you get all ten songs starting from Mike Jacks all the way to the reconciliation. Um, and then five additional songs. So corrupts on. You know, we're horsemen. We're the horsemen no matter what because we still rhyme and hang and deal with each other. And we may not all be on one particular song. We probably will end up doing the horseman album, but we're still the horsemen because we always still do things with each other anyway. Yeah, and uh, have you touched? Have you talked with uh, Cannabis as well? Because he's actually working on some stuff with Keith Murray. That's uh, pretty hot. Keith, Keith already sent me, sent me the beat. So, nice. <laughs> so, you know, the, you know. What they're doing is dope, and I, you know I'm a part of that because obviously those are two of my favorite people. They're my friends. So, and also as MCs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a track, so I got to go lay that. I got to, you know. So it's still the Horseman, even if it's you know under whatever guise. If it's a cannabis solo album or a Razzcast quarterly, you know, series or whatever it is, we we still exist and function amongst each other. So it, it's still the Horseman. Like you hear Priest in his verse, I'm a big Horseman. Like yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It, and, Killer Priest and Cannabis, I mean, uh, Cannabis and, and, and uh, Corrupt. Corrupt are on that song, in the sense of us being on the song, you know what I'm saying? That's the way I feel okay. about it. All right, well, I'm really excited to hear some new Horseman material, and speaking of uh, people that you used to kick it with, of course, uh, you ha- you were running with the Golden State Warriors as well, which was Exhibit and Saphir. I've seen you've been in the uh, in the studio with Exhibit recently. Uh, is uh, Saphir still around too? Yeah, Saphir, um, I think Saphir's in the Bay right now. I haven't um, spoken to him, but I, I see his brother, Chad Black, who, who's with Young Mouth. So, you know, I always see this all family, like nothing changes. We are still in each other's lives, you know what I'm saying? By extension of whatever it is. So, yeah, we, um, you know, me and Exhibit have done some records, some for his, some for mine. I'm sure, you know, when time is right, when, when if he's not busy or whatever's happening, he'll be around, you know. That's, we get it in, man, every day. Nice. And uh, you mentioned Yuck Mouth, of course. Montreal actually has a big uh, Bay and West Coast scene here, like a lot of fans. And I was just wondering if uh, I could get your opinion on the uh, current state of West Coast music, actually. Um, I don't really have a major opinion. I think, uh, you know, we live in the age of information. So, by extension, anything you want. If you want West Coast music, you can find it. It's, it's something called the Internet. You can find it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not one to sit around and complain and say, oh, well, the South is doing this, or the East Coast is doing this, or this is too pop. If I don't listen to it, I have the, the right as a human being to not listen to it. If this radio station plays music that I don't like, then I just don't listen to that station. You know what I'm saying? I don't complain about why I'm not on MTV or why the West Coast. I, I think a lot of times people look at the problem more than they look at solutions. So I'm a person that I'd rather try to look at solutions. What can I do? What kind of music can I make? You know what I'm saying? How can I help myself and by, you know, in the greater sense, you know, whatever, the movement of the West Coast. Of course, I'm born and raised here. I want to see us shining and all that. We still shining, you know, and, and it, it's just maybe our spotlight is turned this way. And if you want to be involved with it, there's the Internet. You can find that music and you can support those people who you think are making good West Coast music. 